mean okay? Nothing is okay. Like, I'm not okay. I'm freaking out. Like, what? Hey y'all, it's Anastasia and welcome back to my channel or welcome to it if you are new here. My name is Anastasia as I mentioned and today I'm going to be talking about my unplanned pregnancy at 20. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about my life before pregnancy, how I found out, telling my friends, family, my boyfriend, my symptoms during my trimester, and also most importantly I think my deepest darkest feelings that I had during pregnancy. And I do want to say that I am sharing this because I hope that somebody else can get help from it to know that it's okay to feel this way because I certainly did not feel okay and felt like I couldn't tell anybody how I was truly feeling. I also do want to say that I would not change anything for the world. I would not take Rowan back or anything like that. I just absolutely adore her and I wouldn't change it for the world. Last thing before we get started, I will be looking at notes because I have a lot that I need to say don't want to forget any of it because I do want to get in deep detail so this is going to be a long video um but yeah let's go ahead and get started I'm first going to talk about what my pre-pregnancy life was like so during this time period I was going into my junior year of college I was but I'm also still majoring in mass communications with a minor in business administration I also was working as a server at a restaurant so that's like what my life basically consisted of was school and work. Now, at this time, me and Carl had been dating for almost a year. We were already living together and we had a really great relationship. Things were going really great. We didn't plan on having children anytime soon. I knew he wanted children, but honestly, I didn't really think I did just because I've never seen myself or pictured myself as a mother. Even as a kid, I didn't picture that for myself. That was something that we hadn't really talked about and it was up in the air. My plans and goals were, you know, obviously to graduate. I wanted to graduate early. Instead of graduating in May 2021, I wanted to graduate in February 2021 to go ahead and get like a jump start on my career. And eventually I wanted us to move somewhere to where I had more and better job opportunities for my degree that I received from college. I also wanted to get married after college too. So that is what was going on basically. And I do also wanna say at this time I was taking birth control. I took it every single day. I didn't want to have really bad period cramps and whatnot. Wanted to make sure my period was regulated and I didn't want to get pregnant because I, me and Carl were sexually active at that time. Flash forward to a couple of weeks. I'm at work, working as a closer on a Saturday night at the restaurant that I was working. And I suddenly got lightheaded, nauseous, instant weakness, started seeing black. Basically, it felt like I was about to pass out, like I had just gotten my blood taken, which is how I react when I have my blood taken, is I basically pass out. And I was like, what the heck is happening? Like, I've, I've eaten today, I've had plenty of water, you know, I was taking care of myself, so I was like, why am I feeling this way? So I had to talk to my manager and was like, listen, I, I can't close tonight. Like, I, I, I told him everything that was going on and he was like, oh, oh my gosh, like, are you okay, like, to drive home? And I said, yeah, I'm just gonna sit down eat something and then I'll be fine. Well, my coworkers were asking, oh, well, are you pregnant? And I was like, what? Like, no, I'm not, what, me pregnant? No, no, there's no freaking way. I'm on birth control, I take it as directed every single day. So no, there's no possible way that I could be pregnant. And, you know, then we were joking around about it a little bit and, you know, I went home that night, didn't think of it. I was like, oh, it was just like a little fluke with my body, you know, malfunction. So flash forward to a couple more weeks. I wasn't feeling too great. I felt kind of off. I didn't have any particular symptoms of pregnancy to per se, except for that one night, which, you know, I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna take a pregnancy just in case because the them joking around that I was pregnant started to like build up in my brain and I was like mm, I should probably take one I know I'm not but I'm gonna take one just in case you know like I know I'm not but gonna do it anyway and so I took a test I think it was October 6th or 5th I can't remember the exact date and literally within a couple of seconds it popped up positive and I literally was like what the actual fuck 
I took this convinced I wasn't and here I am actually pregnant like how how did that happen like I'm on birth control I make sure to take it every single day we're careful like what I don't I, I didn't understand and so I immediately if I had the call logs to show y'all I would insert that but I called Carl because he was at work and he works offshore so I'm calling him I literally I kid you not I called him 50 freaking different times until he finally answered and he answered and I said hey um thank god you answered your phone I mean I didn't call you like 50 times or anything but I just wanted you to know and I really hate to tell you like this but I'm freaking pregnant his reaction was okay what what do you mean what do you mean okay nothing is okay like I'm not okay I'm freaking out like what uh and so that's how it went with me telling Carl and I literally like I just I, I I literally was just shocked like a I I did not know what to do with myself so shortly after that little conversation of him saying okay I asked him a couple more questions we had to hang up he was at work he was busy we couldn't talk about it and honestly I don't remember very much after that like I don't I can't remember if we talked that night I'm sure we did I'm sure I was like, can we take care of a baby? What are we gonna do? What the hell? Like, how do you be parents? Like, I'm a, ch I feel like I'm still a child. Like, I feel like I'm not capable of being a parent. Um, I call my mom every single day to be like, hey mom, so um, I got coffee today. And also Susie at school was like, so sweet to me she gave me a really nice compliment it just made me feel really good I call my mom every single day about everything so like how am i supposed to be a parent like and, and be more of an adult like i just I, I couldn't fathom that and i couldn't like wrap that around my brain at this point after i found out i was pregnant i was shocked utterly freaking shocked i was like there's no fucking way like i my i felt like i was in another universe i was having an out-of-body experience like i was just like this is not happening like this is not me like what like so that's how i initially was feeling so yesterday i found out i was pregnant thought it was a false positive test so i bought like four more and uh took one this morning and it said pregnant within 30 seconds and i was like oh so i'm pregnant pregnant not just like pregnant but like pregnant pregnant um so i haven't told anybody really except for carl obviously and so i figured i would just tell my snapchat memories which i eventually will show to other people maybe like once i've had this child he or she, whatever it may be. I'm honestly freaking out on the inside. Like, how the hell do I do this? Like, I haven't told my mom and dad yet because I'm like, I want to wait in like for Carl to get home because he just left for work. So, of course, he just left for work, right? And I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know? Like, I don't know. Like, how, what? Like, a week later. A week later, that's when it got really bad. I, it, it finally set in that, holy shit, I'm actually pregnant because... I took four more pregnancy tests and I was like oh it's real like it wasn't just a fluke and it was just a false positive like it's it's real and so um it was just scary and I was just terrified because it's like I I don't want to be a parent I don't want to be a mom like I don't want to take care of kid this isn't part of my plan I feel like my life is ruined now because now I'm having a child and I, I just I'm trying not to cry because I really don't like crying in front of people so um, I felt very alone too because I couldn't talk to anybody about it I didn't tell my mom yet. I wanted to wait till Carl got home from work to tell them. Hadn't told his parents because again, I wanted him to be home when we told them. I didn't tell any of my friends. I just, it was very isolating, very alone, and I was just stuck with my thoughts. So, my makeup looks like shit. I look like shit. I feel like shit. I am pregnant. 
I am terrified. I am scared. I want to talk to somebody, but I can't right now. And I want to talk to Carl. But I feel like he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even want to have a baby right now. I only know if I can take care of one. I know financially we can't because Carl says he can pay for it all. But like, I don't know if like mentally, physically, like physically I can be there for a kid. But mentally, I don't know if I'm ready for it. And I'm terrified. I'm scared. And that is currently how I feel about the whole situation. And I know that sounds really bad. But it's true. And I cried. I cried all the time because I was like, my life is over. I was devastated. I felt broken and I felt like no one understood what I was going through. And you know, I couldn't talk to anyone about it. So I told my Snapchat memories to try and help me, which I mean, I ended up just crying even more, honestly. Flash forward to another week, um, we tell our family. Me and Carl, we told his mom and stepdad, and literally this is what their, what their reaction was. It was, hey, so we're pregnant. <gasps> oh my god, yay! It was like, inside, I was like, what the fuck do you mean, yay? Like, no. No, like, I don't, I, I don't want this. They were so excited, you know, and Carl was excited, and then there's me who's just not excited at all because I did not want a baby, and all of a sudden, here I am having a baby. But everybody around me is excited, and then that just started the guilt. That's when guilt started building up, and like, how can, how can I be so disappointed and upset and angry that I was pregnant when everybody around me is so flippin' excited? And then also, there's people out there in the world that are trying to have children, and they can't have children. Like, I should be excited, but at the same time, I was like, I'm not excited. Like, this is not what I, what I planned. This was not how it was supposed to happen. So that's how I felt, too, after telling them. Then we also told my mom and my dad. We had to tell them over FaceTime, and I was nervous of telling them because me and Carl weren't married. And when I told my mom on the phone, she just said, wait, is this a joke? And we were like, no, actually it's not. Like, it, it's not a joke. And, um... She was very supportive, which I'm very thankful for. And I started crying because you never know how your parents are going to react to that kind of news when you're like, oh, by the way, you're going to be a grandma or a grandpa. And you just, you don't know how they're going to take that. Hearing her say that it was okay. And yes, like, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be so freaking difficult to be a mom at this age, you know, at any age, really. And... I'm going to miss out on things, but I'm also, it's just a roadblock. Having a baby at this age, it's just a roadblock. Like, my life isn't over. And her saying that made me feel better, but not all the way because it's like, okay, but how would you know? Because you had me and my brother when y'all wanted to. Like, y'all had us planned. Like, how could you possibly relate, you know? Or how could you possibly understand? And I didn't say that to her, you know, but that's what I was thinking. And so my mom was very, very supportive. My dad also was supportive too. He was like, okay, like it is what it is. That's how it went. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the first doctor's appointment that I ever had. And we had set up an appointment for me to make sure I was actually pregnant for the hospital confirm I was indeed pregnant. So me, my brother, Carl, and his best friend, Maverick, we all went down and drove to the hospital for me to take a pee test. Essentially, I did not know that's what was gonna happen. I thought they were gonna do the whole blood work thing. And that's why they had so many, why I had so many come with me. And now looking back, it's kind of funny because I just went there to pee in a cup and there were three guys in there and I'm sure everybody else was like, hmm. So which one do you think's the daddy? Like that, I can just see like, that like that impression you know i'm sure no one really thought that or really cared but like it was just that's what i thought about so went there took a pee test 
came back home. A couple days later, they called me and they said, hi, is this so-and-so? And I said, yes, this is she. And they said, well, we just wanted to call and let you know that you are pregnant, so congratulations. And I immediately started bawling. And I just said thank you because I wanted to be polite. I didn't want to be rude. And I hung up the phone. Everyone keeps saying congratulations to me. And I just felt like my life was over. And why are you saying congratulations to me? Like, this is not a good thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't want this. I don't want this. I don't want to have to go through this. And it just made me feel even worse because, you know, people were happy for me. And I was not. And it made me more mad because it was like... I kept feeling that pressure that I needed to feel happy even though I didn't and so I cried a lot after that and at that time too I considered an abortion I thought about it and I didn't think about it for very long but I brought it up to Carl and I said you know what about an abortion like what are your thoughts on it and he said I understand it's your body, but this is also my child and we're in a relationship. So I think I have a say in this, which I agreed with him because I did agree with that. And he said, you know, if you want an abortion, that's what's going to make you happy. Fine. That, that it is what it is. But I don't think I could continue on in a relationship with you because you have killed my child and I didn't have a say in it. And I just, I couldn't be with somebody who did that. And I said, okay. And then he said, you know, if you can't take care of a child and you feel like you can't do it and you don't want to do it, then have the baby and I will take care of her. And you can do whatever you want to do. But I also knew that the answer was not an abortion because I would always wonder who they would be, you know? And then I would have felt instant regret and I feel like I could not carry on with my life like that. And so that's when I like, you know, was like, okay, I'm having a baby. Like I'm, I'm going to be a mom. And I try to start thinking positively and try to have a better outlook on it, knowing that Carl was there to support me. I also went to my ultrasound, my first ultrasound, my first pap smear ever, and then an abdominal exam, pelvic exam, all that. And that is when I learned the due date for Rowan. And I didn't even cry in that appointment. All I could think about was this fucking sucks. Like, I don't want to be here. I just saw like this little bean. And I was like, most people would be so thrilled to like, see their child. And here I am just sitting here like, I, I didn't, I didn't have any feelings. I didn't have any feelings of attachment, excitement. It was just devastation still. And Anytime I watch YouTube videos of people seeing their first ultrasound or going to an ultrasound, they're crying and they're excited and I didn't feel that way and it was just, it was hard because I wanted to feel that way but I couldn't. I literally could not feel that way because I was still stuck in the mindset of my life is ruined. So at this point, the feelings I were feeling were, um, I was still crying every single night. I cried myself to sleep every single night. And I still felt like my life was over. I was stressed, anxious. I felt like I was alone. And I also was embarrassed and ashamed because I'm not married and I'm 20 and I am pregnant. I was just depressed because I kept seeing videos because I was just wanting to do research on pregnancy and all that and trying to make myself more educated. And I just kept seeing people so freaking happy and thrilled. And I was like, why can't I have that? Why do I feel this way? I can't, I, I just, I don't have that. And I felt so upset because I didn't feel that way. And I felt so guilty. And that's when the guilt started coming into even more stronger than before. I started not wanting to go to class because, oh my gosh, what if people find out? What if they can tell? I didn't want to go anywhere because I didn't want anyone seeing or knowing or having a hint that I possibly could be pregnant. And that leads into my first trimester symptoms. So lovely first trimester symptoms. Peeing like crazy. All the time, 24 seven. 
Nausea was off the charts. I could not eat anything. I tried the crackers. I tried Tums. I tried everything that you could possibly to make your nausea better and nothing worked. It was awful. The only thing I could eat when I forced myself to eat was healthy food. It was, I needed to eat like green beans, like vegetables. That, yeah, that was it, like vegetables. That's, that's all I could really manage to eat. Exhaustion was so huge. I literally had to take a nap every single day and it wasn't just like a little cat nap. No, it was like three or four hours long. It was a whole sleep as Carl would call it. Um, I was very sensitive to the smell. Um, moving on to my second trimester. This is when I went ahead and told people I'm pregnant. I made an announcement on my Instagram, my Facebook. <laughs> I was pregnant and this was all in hopes to get me excited every single comment that I got on Facebook and Instagram was full of love full of love and it made me feel better and it made me a little bit more excited I also started dealing with people saying I needed to eat more because I wasn't showing now let me give you all some background information I have been a runner since my seventh grade year of middle school I ran for eight years I ran eight years of my life and I had a muscular body. I had abs, okay? When you have abs, it takes a little bit longer for your stomach to stretch out because your muscle is so toned, it takes a little bit longer to stretch out. So hearing that really just made me mad because I finally was getting to a point of happiness and excitement and all of a sudden it's just not good enough because I'm too small still. When someone is pregnant, you don't comment on their body size. You do not comment on a body's, on a person's body regardless, but especially when someone is pregnant. So the feelings at this point were still a shame and embarrassment and I was still depressed. However, I was getting a little excited. I was getting a little more excited because I was also getting to the point of like, who fucking cares? Who fucking cares what anybody else has to say? They're not the one who made this baby for one. Two, it's not their life. Three, they're not the one that's gonna have to take care of my baby. So why do I care what they think? So I decided that like, okay, enough is enough. Like I, I need to try and get more excited. So to help me move along into being more excited, we did a gender reveal. And the gender reveal was really nice. It was really fun. It was really exciting. <laughs> But again, from all my, all the friends and family, I still got people commenting on my body of how I was still just a little tiny twig. You commenting on that, I can't change it, so don't comment on it. That's just how I feel. As for symptoms during that time period, I didn't really have any symptoms except for the fact that I was still peeing like excessively, like way too freaking much, and I was having stomach pains. It sucked because it was my freaking stomach stretching because it had never been stretched like that before. Moving on, so third trimester comes around and I was still dealing with the itty bitty body comments and I was actually showing at this point. And it's like, okay, so you said I needed to eat more because I wasn't showing at all. I'm now showing and you're saying it's not enough still. What the fuck do you want from me? My, um, OBGYN was saying everything was healthy, everything was going great during my pre pregnancy, that yes, I was a smaller frame, but my baby was doing just fine. Everything was fine, my baby was healthy. So if that's all that matters, then why are you commenting on my freaking body and what it looks like? Like, it's just not necessary. I know I've said this like three different times, but that's just how I was feeling throughout my pregnancy and that's how much I got it, which is ridiculous. As for my symptoms, this is when things started to get rough again. Um, I was still peeing excessively, I had severe discomfort when going to sleep and I was also losing a lot of sleep. I literally would get so mad that Carl was resting and sleeping peacefully. And meanwhile, I'm sitting up and I've been awake for five hours trying to go to sleep and I'm just staring at the ceiling like, this is nice, great. Because my baby would just be pounding, punching, doing some somersaults, doing some kickboxing moves up in there, and it was just, it drove me nuts. So March rolls around, 
2020 and COVID hits. At this point, I stopped working and that is when my depression, because at, throughout my pregnancy, like my depression was still there, but my depression got even worse because I wasn't able to see family, my friends. Carl was gone two weeks out of the month still at this point. It was just me being pregnant, stuck with all my feelings and upsetness still, trying to be excited, but struggling to be excited, wanting it to be over and not be pregnant anymore because March, I was like seven months pregnant and ready to be over with it. Like I just didn't want to be pregnant anymore, but I also was terrified and anxious and scared because it's like, okay, well now COVID has hit. What's going to happen to my baby? What can happen to me? It was just, it was a lot of feelings. Another thing that I was doing during my third trimester was nesting. And I did this for a couple of reasons. One, I couldn't help it. Two, because I wanted my house to be clean as much as possible before our baby came. And three, because I was trying to get myself excited and keep myself excited for having a baby because it was almost time to have a baby. We were getting really close. I think this was probably like 30 weeks, 32 weeks that I was pregnant and it's like, oh crap, we have a couple more weeks left and then that's it. Like the baby's here and our lives are changed forever. So I was trying to prepare as much as possible, but at the same time, COVID was happening. I was depressed. Carl was gone. Carl couldn't help me with a lot of things. It was just really hard. And also I couldn't clean for as long as I wanted to because my body, I was getting so big and I was so exhausted after just sweeping. Like I was out of breath. I couldn't breathe. I had to sit down, chill out for like an hour before I could even move on and do something else. But by that time, I didn't even feel like doing it because I wanted to take a three to four hour nap. The other thing that happened during my trimester was my baby shower as well. It was a really nice baby shower. My um, boyfriend's mom and his sister, they put it together for me and it was really, really nice. I really enjoyed it, had a great time and it actually made me more excited because I had all of this baby stuff now and it's like, holy shit, this is real, like it's happening. Like, yes, I've seen the ultrasounds. Yes, I've already bought some things. Yes, I've had already received things, but I got so much more things and so many little baby clothes. And I, I actually was getting excited. And we did it outside because yes, COVID was occurring and COVID was happening, but we did it outside and we, you know, social distance and stuff like that. But it also was not the way I had imagined it to be, which was also really disappointing because it was like another way to get me excited, but I can't do it the way I want to because COVID. And the feelings I was feeling during my third trimester was, okay, I'm ready to pop this baby out of me. Like, I'm ready to be done. But the exact same time, in the same breath, I was terrified of labor. I did so much research on labor. Honestly, before I was even pregnant, I had no idea what an epidural really was. I had no idea what that procedure looked like or how it was done. I had no idea that labor just didn't happen just like this, that it actually takes time and that your water can break, but you not even have your baby till like 48 hours later or that the way you wanna have your baby may not even actually happen. So all of those things were going on through my brain and I was just like, this is a lot. I had no clue, holy shit. But again, I, I was ready to be done. Like I was just over it. At this time too, I was still stressed and depressed. Stressed because holy shit, it's happening and depressed because holy shit, it's happening. So yeah, but I also was excited because holy shit, it's happening. I get to be done with being pregnant because I absolutely hated being pregnant. The entire time I was pregnant, I absolutely hated it. I, I felt like I wasn't even me, that I wasn't even in my own body throughout the time. And I was just ready to be over with it and be done and get back to like normal. I wanted to be normal again, at least somewhat normal. Cause I know after having a baby, there is no <laughs> back to normal, you know? I also had maternity pictures taken two days, exactly two days before Rowan was born. Literally was joking with the, my friend who was taking my pictures for me and I was like, yeah, um, I literally could pop, up, pop out my baby right like any moment now, basically, because I had gone to my doctor's appointment and we, you know, I got checked. And at 35 weeks, I was one to two centimeters dilated. And then at 37 weeks, I was three to four centimeters dilated and 50% in face. So literally at any point, I was ready to have a baby. So I had my maternity pictures done two days before I had her, which was freaking awesome timing because again, I was doing that as something to get excited about having a baby for one. Two, it was like, okay, when I'm older and when she's older, I'm sure she's going to want to see pictures of me being pregnant and, you know, at least pretending to be happy and excited. 
Um, so I went ahead and got them taken and I'm glad I did because I look back at them now and I'm like, holy cow, like a lot has changed since then. So as I mentioned, we got those pictures taken two days before Rowan was born and then Rowan was born at the end of May. I'm gonna be doing a birth story. So if you are interested in seeing that, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. And then also leave any comments down below about any questions that you may have or anything that I may not have been super clear about or you know maybe that you can relate to this or maybe you felt the same way or maybe share what your story was if you've had a child before or maybe if you're pregnant right now um i would love to get a conversation going in the comments down below so yeah that's it for this video today so i will talk to y'all later and i'll see y'all in my next video bye